In this lesson, we will discuss regions in the complex plane. So we're going to discuss sets of complex numbers in the complex plane and the closeness of these points to one another. Our first definition is for an epsilon neighborhood. An epsilon neighborhood of a point Z0 in the complex plane is the set of all points lying inside but not on a circle centered at Z0 with radius epsilon greater than 0. I'm going to draw an epsilon neighborhood. So given a point Z0, we take a circle centered at Z0 with radius epsilon. Then this whole region inside this circle is an epsilon neighborhood of Z0. Another name for this type of set is called an open ball centered at Z0 with radius epsilon. Written in set notation, this is the set of all complex numbers Z such that the modulus of Z minus Z0 is less than epsilon. A deleted neighborhood of a point Z0 would be the set of all points in an epsilon neighborhood of Z0 except for the point Z0 itself. So when we see in the set notation, we now have the absolute value of Z minus Z0 is greater than 0 and less than epsilon. So given a set S, a point Z0 is called an interior point of the set S. Whenever we can find an epsilon neighborhood of Z0 that contains only points of S. So you could put a small open ball around Z0 and it's contained in S completely. Let's look at an example. Let's define the set S to be the set of complex numbers whose absolute value is less than or equal to 1. So here's a picture of the set S. It's the unit circle and all the points inside the unit circle. We call this the unit disk. Any point that is inside the circle, we can find an epsilon neighborhood of that point that is contained completely inside the set S. So we see that any point that is not on the circle, any point inside is an interior point of the set S. So this point is an interior point. Any point that is on the circle, this would be a boundary point. It's a point such that every epsilon neighborhood around a boundary point would contain points both in S and not in S. So this point on the circle is a boundary point. A set of all boundary points is called the boundary of S. And then any point that is outside the circle, we can find an epsilon neighborhood around such a point that contains no points in S, and this is called an exterior point. So point Z0 is an exterior point of the set S whenever there exists some epsilon neighborhood of Z0 that contains no points of S. If Z0 is neither an interior point nor an exterior point of a set S, then Z0 is called a boundary point of S. Every epsilon neighborhood of a point Z0 that's a boundary point will contain points both in S and points not in S. Set of all boundary points of a set S makes up the boundary of S. So as we illustrated in this example, any point inside the disk is an interior point, any point on the disk is a boundary point, and the boundary is made up of the set of complex numbers whose absolute value equals 1, and the 
exterior point, it would be any point that is outside the disk. So for this set, the boundary of S is the set of complex numbers such that the absolute value of z equals 1. So the unit circle would be the boundary of the unit disk. Our next definition will be of an open set. A set is called open if it contains none of its boundary points. The following theorem can be proven that a set is open if and only if each of its points is an interior point. So a set is open if you can, for every point inside a set, you can find an epsilon neighborhood around that point that is contained inside the set. A set is closed if it contains all of its boundary points. We define the closure of a set S as S with a bar over it to be a closed set consisting of S and the boundary of S. If a set S is closed, then the closure of S is S itself. Let's look at some examples. The set of complex numbers is both open and closed. If you look at the whole complex plane, we can draw an epsilon neighborhood around any complex number that is contained in the complex plane and since the complex numbers has no boundary points, we cannot find a boundary point that is not com contained in the complex numbers, so therefore complex numbers would also be a closed set. Consider the following example. So this would be the unit disk minus the point zero, minus the origin zero. So here's a sketch of the set of the unit disk minus the origin. We see that this set is not open because any point that's on the unit circle cannot be an interior point. Any epsilon neighborhood around a point on the unit circle will not be contained in the set. So we see that the origin is actually a boundary point of this set. And since zero is not contained in this set, the set is not closed. It does not contain all of its boundary points. So we see that this set is neither open nor closed. Now the closure of this set would be the whole unit disk. So we'd have to include the boundary point zero in order to find the closure of this set. Now let's talk about an open set being connected. We say that an open set S is connected if each pair of points in S can be joined by a polygonal line consisting of a finite number of line segments joined end to end that lies entirely in S. Here's an example of a connected set. The set of complex numbers whose absolute value is less than 1 is an open set and if I find any two points in this set I can just connect them by a single straight line segment and since this line segment is completely contained inside the set we see that this is a connected set. Next, let's look at this donut-shaped region, which is an open set containing the complex numbers whose absolute value is between 1 and 2. This is also a connected set, because if I had any two points in this annulus, we could find a polygonal path that joins these two points and is completely contained inside this set. So the set is also connected. A domain is any open connected set. 
a domain together with some, all, or none of its boundary points is called a region. Our next definition will give us a way to describe sets that may have points that are infinitely far away from the origin. A set S is called bounded if every point in S lies inside some circle absolute value of Z equals R. In other words, every point in S lies a finite distance away from the origin in the complex plane. If a set is not bounded, we call it unbounded. This means that given any arbitrary distance, capital R, we can find an, a point in S whose absolute value is greater than R. Some examples of unbounded sets the complex numbers is an un unbounded set, as well as the line consisting of complex numbers whose real part is equal to 2. So this would be a vertical line where the real part x is equal to 2. This line is unbounded as well. A point z0 is called an accumulation point of a set S if each deleted epsilon neighborhood of z0 contains at least one point of S. But it follows that if a set S is closed, then it must contain each of its accumulation points. This is true because if a accumulation point Z0 were not in S, then it would have to be a boundary point of S. But if it was not contained in S, then that would be a boundary point that is not contained in S, and so S would not be closed. So we see that every closed set must contain all of its accumulation points. The converse of that statement is actually true as well. If a set contains each of its accumulation points, then that set S is closed. So we see that a point Z0 is not an accumulation point of a set S. Whenever we can find a deleted neighborhood of Z0, that does not contain at least one point of S. So let's look at some sets and some examples of accumulation points for these sets. Consider the set of points Zn defined by I over N, where N is a natural number, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So let's look at the picture of these points in the complex plane. Here's the first three elements of this set, i, i over 2, i over 3. And we see as n gets bigger and bigger, these points get closer and closer to the origin, but they never actually reach the origin. So from the definition of accumulation point, we see that the origin 0 is the only accumulation point. Of this set. We see that given any deleted neighborhood around zero will contain at least one element Zn. Any other point in the plane will not have this characteristic. So the only accumulation point is zero. Next, let's look at the set A, defined as the set of all complex numbers Z, with principal argument between 0 and pi over 2. This set, in the complex plane, would correspond to what we call the first quadrant. The positive real axis is the line argument of Z, equals 0 and the portion of the imaginary axis above the real axis is equal to the set where the argument is pi over 2. So the set A would then be everything in between these two rays or the first quadrant. We 
see that A is an open set. Further, it's connected. Any two points can be inside of A can be joined by a straight line completely in A. The set is therefore a domain, an open connected set. Since points in the first quadrant can be arbitrarily far from the origin, we see that A is unbounded. Now let's talk about accumulation points and boundary points. Any point that is on the positive real axis or any complex number whose principal argument is pi over 2 will be a boundary point. So the boundary of A is the set real number Z such that the principal value of the argument of Z equals 0 or pi over 2 or if z is the origin. The origin is also a boundary point of A. Now, each one of these elements of the boundary of A is also an accumulation point of A, but any point on the interior of A is also an accumulation point of A. So. The accumulation points of A equals the set of Z equal to X plus IY such that X is greater than or equal to 0 and Y is greater than or equal to 0. So we're talking about the whole set A as well as the boundary of A. Since this equals the set A joined with its boundary, we see that this is also equal to the closure of A. Now let's take a look at the set B defined at, as the set of Z such that the absolute value of Z minus 4 is greater than or equal to the absolute value of Z. So we're going to first sketch this set and if we think of this in terms of distances, we look at the absolute value of z minus 4 as the distance from z to 4. And the absolute value of z, we think of that as the absolute value of z minus 0. And as a distance, this would be the distance from z to the origin 0. So the points that satisfy this inequality are the points whose distance from z to 4 is greater than or equal to the distance from z to the origin 0. So if we look at this, these two points, the origin 0 and the point 4, consider the points that are the same distance from 0 and 4. Well, we can see that the point 2 on the real line would be equal distance from 0 to 4. If I draw a vertical line with a real part equal to 2, then all the points on that vertical line will be the same distance from 0 to the number 4. So this vertical line would be the boundary of the set B. This would be the points whose distance from 0 is equal to this distance to, to 4. 
and in fact this is the boundary of B, then anything to the left of this vertical line will be closer to zero than it is to four. So they would also be in the set B. So the set B is anything to the left or on this vertical line with real part equal to two. So we were able to identify the set B in terms of distances. We could also look at algebraically the distance from Z to four as being the square root of X minus four, 20 squared plus Y squared. And we want that to be greater than or equal to the distance from Z to zero, which would just be the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And squaring both sides, gives this expression, and then multiplying out x minus 4 squared gives x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared is greater than or equal to x squared plus y squared. And when we cancel the x squared and y squared, this simplifies to 16 is greater than or equal to 8x and therefore x is less than or equal to 2. So we see that the set B could also be described as a set of complex numbers Z such that the real part of Z is less than or equal to 2. So we can see that this half plane that we drew before corresponds exactly to this set real part of Z less than or equal to 2. Now let's go back to some of the definitions. We see that B is closed because it contains all of its boundary points on the line real part of Z equals two. It's connected. It is also unbounded. The boundary of B would be the set of all Z with real part equal to two. So this vertical line is the boundary of B. And every point of B is an accumulation point of the set B.